Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss data transformation. What is data transformation? Well, it's a process used in computing and data management where data is converted from one format or structure into another format. And this process can be done manually or automated using some sort of a software tool or script. Simply put, you are changing the data format. For example, a date. A date can be written in more than one way. For example, you could write a date as, for example, 06-07-1976. Well, if we read this, it's June 7th, 1976. This is how you would read this data if you are looking at US data. European data, they put the day first. In Europe, this date can be as written as, you would read it as the 6th of July, 1976. This is if you are using a European database because they put the day first. In the US, we put the month first. So if you are dealing with data from two different databases, you might have, you might have to do what's called data transformation, maybe to change the how it's being done. So this is what we mean by converting the data from one format into another. That's, that's an example of it. We're going to look at several other examples. Why is this necessary? It's a crucial in making data more usable and valuable for businesses. You want to have the proper data. The data has to be standard throughout the database in order to faci facilitate better decision making, reporting, and data analysis. And data transformation can involve several steps, several activities. You might want to cleanse the data, normalize the data, convert the data, map the data, aggregate the data, and sometimes enrich the data. In this session, we would look at all these steps that are involved in data transformation. There could be other steps, but those are usually the main steps. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with data cleansing. Well, what do you have to do? You have to clean the data. Clean it from what? Well, let's see. This involves correcting or removing errors, incomplete, uh, looking at incomplete information or irrelevant data. So the first thing you want to do, if you're working with the data, you want to make sure it's accurate, it's complete, and it's relevant to what you want to do. And this is an essential step to make sure it's accurate. And the data is of quality type, good quality. An example would be, for example, a database contained customer record with some entries having missing postal code. Well, I may need this, those postal code. Data cleansing would involve identifying those records and filling the correct postal code or removing or flagging any incomplete records because if they are incomplete, they are useless for our analysis. They're just, just let's move, let's remove them. Let's cleanse the data. Or if we need to add the zip code, the proper zip code, we add the proper zip code. Why? Because we want to have complete data. So you want to cleanse the data. Also, we have to do what's called data normalization. This process restructure the data to reduce redundancies. If there are any redundancies, re repeated data, in several places, and this will improve what we call data integrity. This involves organizing the information into the proper fields of the, and tables to minimize duplication. An example would be, maybe we'll have a sales database where customer information is stored in both orders. So we have orders in one place where we have customer data, and we have customer table leading to duplication. And that's not good for a database. You'll have to normalize the data. The normalizing the data would involve restructuring the database so that customer information is stored only in customer's table, then reference in the order table through what's called the customer ID. Now, if you don't understand specifically what this is, here we're talking about the foreign key and primary key. 
If you don't understand what this is, you want to go to my pri primary and foreign key lesson in order to understand this. But the point is, you don't want any duplication. Data conversion. This step involves converting the data from one format or type of data to another, such as converting text data to numerical data or changing the format of dates and time fields. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this could be necessary if you are looking at data from a European database versus a US database. An example would be a database set contains data in the format of month, day, year. But the target system requires the date to be year, month, date. So you have to change the data format. Data conversion would involve changing all the date entries to the required format so it makes sense, so we can analyze it properly. Data mapping. This step involves defining how data fields from one source file or database are matched to the fields in the targeted database or file. So simply put, transferring data from one database to another. You have to map them. For example, if you're migrating customer data from one customer relationship management system to another, fields in the old system might look like first name and last name like this. They might be mapped to first underscore name and last name in the new system. Therefore, we know that this first name, all one word versus first name underscore name is the same. So you want to map it. Data mapping defines these relationships so the data can be accurately transferred. So first name will be transferred to the first name. Last name will be transferred to the last name because their name and mechanism is different between the two databases. You map it. You tell it that those are the same thing data aggregation. This process involves summarizing or combining data from multiple sources or record, often for analysis or reporting purposes. A aggregation is adding everything. An e-commerce company might aggregate sales data from multiple sources, online, in-store, or partner to calculate total sales per region. So the, you're aggregating all the data. This step involves summarizing, summarizing detailed transaction into a more an aggregate format for analysis purposes. During the data transformation, we could also have what's called data enrichment. What is data enrichment? It's enhancing existing data by appending related information from external sources. So we have the data. Let's add a little bit more to that data to make it more lively, more useful. This can include adding demographic information to customer records. This is for example. Another example will be, take a look at a marketing database that contain basic information about prospect. We just have their name, their email. What can we do? Well, data enrichment could involve adding social media profiles so we can reach out to them, finding out their interests, purchasing habit from external data sources to create a more comprehensive view of each prospect. We only have name and email. Let's see, what are they online? If they are online, from their online record, we can see their habits, we can see their purchasing pattern so we can target them better. This is called data enrichment. And this is also a form of data transformation. Let's take a look at multiple choice of question from farhatlectures.com. What is the primary purpose of data transformation in the context of data integration? So you're integrating the data. So what's the purpose of this data transformation in this context? Is it to reduce the physical size of the data is this why you do a data transformation when you are doing data integration? What's data integration? Data integration, making sure the data is integrated. It's, it's combined together properly. It's integrated. Is it to reduce the physical say, size of the data? Well, it's good to reduce the physical size of the data, but it has nothing to do with data transformation. You compress the data when you want to reduce the size of it, but this is not the purpose of data transformation in this context. So A is out. To ensure compatibility between different data format. Is this the purpose of data transformation when you're integrating the data? I would say yes, making sure the data is compatible, it's integratable from two different data format. I would say B is a good answer, but let's look at C and D to make sure that those are incorrect answers. To increase the speed of the internet, <laughs> not at all. Data transformation has nothing to do with the speed of your internet. This is easy way out. And again, some of the answers, they have to be so obviously wrong. To encrypt the data for security purposes. Now, this is kind of tempting because it's a correct statement. Encrypting the data for security purposes is a great practice. You want to do that in case the data fell into the wrong hands. They cannot read it. 
but it has nothing to do with transformation in the context of data integration. So that's not answering the question, although it's a correct statement. A is a correct statement to reduce the physical size of the data. You compress the data, but that's not what we are dealing with here. We're dealing with data integration, and the answer indeed was B. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself, whether you are studying for your CPA, CMA, you're an accounting student. You are investing in yourself. Stay safe, good luck, and study hard.